Finding Dory is the Pixar sequel to 2003's hit movie, Finding Nemo. This time, the story centers around a blue tang fish named Dory who is in search of her parents. Dory's journey involves traveling from the Great Barrier Reef in Australia all the way to Morro Bay, California, a distance of about 11,000 kilometers. So that got me thinking, what are the odds of finding one specific fish in the sea. Could you find Dory? If you were to pluck a fish out of the ocean at random, the odds of it being the fish that you are looking for is about one in four trillion. But that's no fun. What if you wanted to physically search and swim to find Dory? What are the odds of that happening and how long would it take you? Even though this may seem like a daunting task, it might be a little bit easier than you think. Now, let's begin our search for Dory. To start, we must first look at how big the oceans are. About 71% of the Earth's surface area is covered by the oceans. That's about 361 million square kilometers, or 67 billion football fields. But the ocean is also really, really deep. The average depth of the ocean is 4,267 meters, which is the equivalent of five Burj Khalifas stacked on top of each other. The deepest part of the ocean being the Marianas Trench, reaching 11 kilometers down to the ocean floor and being two kilometers longer than Mount Everest. What I'm trying to say here is that the ocean has a lot of water, like 1.3 billion cubic kilometers of water. But that's no problem, all we have to do is swim through the billions of kilometers of ocean water to find Dory. Easy peasy. Lucky for us, she can't really be in any random part of the ocean, because blue tang fish are mainly found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. And within these oceans, blue tang fish are found in extremely high concentrations around coral reefs. This is normal because about 25% of all marine species have a coral reef as their home habitat. Great, now we know where to look for Dory. So all we have to do is search some coral reefs to find our fish. The reefs in the Indian and Pacific Ocean take up about 0.8% of the total ocean surface area in the world. This gives us about a 1 million square kilometer search area that we will have to look through. That's about the same size as Egypt. The average coral reef is 22 meters deep, which is good because scuba divers are not supposed to go deeper than 40 meters, and it also gets very dark very fast, around 100 to 200 meters in depth, making it difficult to spot our fish. Imagine that you want to begin searching for dory in the coral reefs right now. So you put on your wetsuit, get your scuba gear on, and dunk your head into the ocean water. You would have a sight line or be able to see 20 meters in any direction meaning that you'd be able to search 33,510 cubic meters of water at any time. Awesome, so now you've jumped into the water, look around, and you can't find Dory. What do you do? You have to start swimming. The fastest human swimmers on the planet can swim two meters per second. And because I'm being generous, I will assume that all of you watching this are as good a swimmers as Michael Phelps. To summarize, we have to search an area around the coral reefs that is 22 trillion cubic meters. You have a sight sphere of 33,510 meters. And if you're an elite swimmer, you can cover about two meters per second. If you searched for Dory nonstop and kept swimming continuously through the reefs without getting tired or wanting to eat, or stopping because you realize how pointless this mission is, what is the maximum amount of time that it would take for you to find her? By the math, it would take you 416 years and 4 months just to find one fish. To put that in perspective, if someone started their search the day the United States declared their independence, they would still have 176 years left in their journey. So the fact that Nemo, Marlin, Dory, and the rest of the gang could find a single fish in the ocean within 103 minutes it's quite an impressive feat, to say the least. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you like science, hit the awesome button if you're awesome, and make sure to check out one of my other videos if you just want to see more of me. And remember that you are all very, very, very beautiful people, and I will see you guys next time.